how to desexualize your brain. Fellas, you've probably seen a lot of videos on this, but in this one, I'm gonna be giving you a step-by-step -step process to actually do it. So if you learn how to do this correctly, what you're going to be able to do is you're actually going to be able to do better with women. Ironically, by desexualizing your brain, you're gonna be able to have more sex. Because when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about just not wanting to sleep with women. Obviously, that's not gonna happen. But what I am gonna teach you to do is to control it. So it's not interrupting your everyday life. So it's not preventing you from reaching your goals, being able to focus, all of those things. You're gonna do a lot better in all aspects of your life if you learn how to control this. And remember, when it comes to dating, no women can control you if you can control your lust. And what it's gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to redirect that energy that would normally be to like jerking off or wasting your time or you know pursuing things with for short-term gratification to actually doing things that are gonna get you to where you want to get. And this could be with women. So let's talk about thing number one. Thing number one is make a commitment to do this. So many guys talk about this, they watch videos, they say it's good, they say it's something they should do, but nobody makes a commitment. Write it down and write down the reasons that you're gonna do it. In fact, I want you to pause this video, get out a piece of paper and write down those reasons right now. Do it now. All right, cool. Now that we've done this, let's go into step number two, which is to remove all triggers, all right? Triggers is something that when you see it, it stimulates your brain, you start thinking of lustful thoughts, and then you wanna go out and you know act on those. Usually it means you're gonna jerk off, okay? Usually it means you're gonna look at pornography. What you wanna do is take away all of those things that could possibly trigger you. I'm talking thirst traps that you're following on Instagram. I'm talking those 17-year-old chicks you see dancing in TikTok videos. I'm talking ASMR videos that you're looking at or even friends of yours that are posting these hot pictures or the, you know, the booty pics at Tulum or whatever, I want you to not unfollow them because that'll cause drama, but at least put them on mute or stop seeing their posts if that's all you're seeing from them, okay? This kind of trigger that you're seeing on your everyday life in your computer and all that stuff, it's going to prevent you from being able to desexualize your brain. You want to wake up and not get stimulated by those things. What you want to do is be able to focus and put that energy into being productive and actually doing the things that you can do in life. And it's gonna help you with women. If you're getting triggered all the time and you need to get laid constantly, you're gonna start acting needy around women. So take away those triggers, everything's gonna get better. Step number three is going to be eliminate pornography, okay? I have a full video that I'm gonna do on this, a step-by-step -step process for quitting porn. But basically in this, you're gonna to wanna to get rid of pornography. And most pornography use, in fact, all pornography use is not super useful, okay? What I've noticed is that a lot of guys do this as a distraction. They do it because they're bored. So what you want to do is you want to start filling your day with things that are actually meaningful and they're working towards something. But the first thing that you want to do is when you've removed the triggers, just basically make it impossible for you to get on a pornography site. So you can block the site, you can make sure it's not accessible. Here in Texas, most sites are not accessible due to a law they just passed, so that's already good for some of you. Uh, but for a lot of you guys, making it that much harder to get to pornography is gonna make your brain much more desexualized. Step number four is to learn to fall in love with the struggle, okay? The biggest reason why desexualizing your brain helps you is because you stop caring so much about short-term gratification. These quick hits that you get, these dopamine releases that you get, you're less into those things, okay? You're more about the struggle. You're more about actually working towards something. And anything worth doing requires a little bit of struggle. Whether you're building a business, whether you're pursuing your dream woman, or whether you're building a dating life that's actually gonna be worthwhile where you can get women to chase you. All of these things require you to put in time and effort. And you're not gonna be able to do that if all you're looking for is the short-term gratification. So you wanna eliminate a lot of the stuff that is gonna give you that short-term gratification. Uh, and this include a lot of social media use, okay? So social media, even if you eliminate a lot of the stuff that I talked about, like the thirst traps, those you know random girls that you don't even know that are posting a bunch of booby pictures, you know, even if you eliminate those, you're still like scrolling, maybe you see a nice house, maybe you see like some guy, you know, you know, on this cool trip or whatever, and you're getting these quick dopamine hits or a funny video, like all of these things are quick gratification. So the less time that you spend doing that, the more time that you're gonna be involved and in actually be doing deep work, which is necessary to be productive at literally anything, okay? So you wanna get rid of TikTok, you wanna get rid of Snapchat, a lot of those things, and I'm not saying you can never look at them, just really cut down on your use. If you use them for social purposes, all right. But in general, I don't know any 
anything that TikTok is super useful for. And not just TikTok, we also want to eliminate things like vaping, things like, you know, eating sweets, or just like quick things that are really gonna give you a quick high, but later on, they actually don't provide that much value to you, okay? So try and eliminate the short-term gratification things that you're going for. Step number five is to start scheduling your day. Now you've noticed I've said get rid of a lot of things, and you're wondering, well, what am I gonna do with my day? Well, if you stick to a schedule and you have things planned out, then what's gonna happen is you're probably not gonna do a lot of the things to waste time. Okay, typically people who have trouble desexualizing their brain, they're bored and aimless a lot. If you have a plan each day, if you have a schedule that you're going by, things that you have to do each day, you really don't have the time to be thinking about all of that stuff, okay? And you're actually gonna be moving towards your goals. So schedule out each day, you know, take your Google Calendar, put the stuff that you need to do in there, and then make sure you give yourself breaks. You know, when I first started doing this, I was just like, it was like work thing, work thing, work thing, work thing. You know, schedule in time to have fun, you know, schedule in time for like a walk, schedule in time for exercise, schedule in time for a game or a video game or something like that where you can, you know, goof off for just a little bit, all right? You want it like probably work for, typically people can only work for 25 minutes at a time. So you wanna give yourself at least a five minute break where you're doing something else. So that way you can refocus on the next assignment. And the other thing that you should be scheduling in addition to fun is you should be scheduling in difficult things. For instance, if I wake up and I do like a cold plunge, a two hour workout, uh, then I do the sauna, and then afterwards I get out and take a shower. By the time I've gotten home, like I'm feeling pretty relaxed. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. But if you wake up and you don't do any of those things, your body hasn't done, your body hasn't really pushed itself. And so what happens is that you get kind of in comfort, you start getting bored and nameless, and that can actually lead to more of the, you know, looking at things online, the jerking off, all of that stuff. It goes down a bad path. But if you do hard things every single day, then your body can feel good when it's just like sitting there and relaxing. But if all you're doing is sitting there and relaxing, it can be quite challenging. Step six is to get around people more. When I was a kid, I rarely masturbated. And it wasn't because like I didn't, you know, discover it or didn't think it was awesome. I thought it was freaking awesome, but I just didn't have a whole lot of time, you know, by myself. The only time I really had was when I would shower, you know, like I was at camp, I was, you know, with my family, I was like with my friends, I was around people all the time. But then when I started working from home, you know, my jerking off rate went shoo, skyrocketed, all right? So the more time you're around people, that the less time that you have to do that. Step seven, don't try to repress feelings. Okay, so when I see guys doing this, they think like desexualizing their brain, like any sort of like sexual thought you have is like bad. Well, that's actually not true. Like there's no way you're gonna stop thinking about that. In fact, you're gonna be able to actually gain more pleasure from it by doing this. Um, but you're just gonna be able to control it. So when you have a thought that comes in, like, you know, you've done everything that we've talked about, but maybe, you know, you're at the beach or something like that, and there's a bunch of women in bikinis. All right, yeah, your brain's probably gonna be like, oh, damn, look at all these hot mamas. Like, I would love to get with one of them, you know? And then you start thinking bad thoughts. That's okay, it's okay to think bad thoughts. What's not okay is to let those thoughts take you into a bad place so you start doing all of these other things that waste your time, okay? What you wanna do is acknowledge the thought, let it be there and then move on to the thing that you gotta do because that's gonna make you the happiest in your life. And then step number eight is find simple pleasures. Simple pleasures in life are great. I'll give you an example of a simple pleasure that I replaced with. So I used to really like uh, juice. I was a really big juice fan. I really loved sugar. So I really wanted to get my sugar fixed every single day. But one of the things that I noticed was that I was not feeling great. Like my body wasn't looking the way I wanted it to. So I decided to switch for a uh, soda water that I started as a flavored soda water that I drink, okay? It has no calories in it and the flavoring is like, has barely any sugar. So I'm drinking way less sugar, but I'm still getting a little bit of a fix every single day. Find something that works where you can replace, you know, pornography and masturbation or whatever activity it is that you're doing that's like very sexualized or for short-term gratification, okay? Going for walks can help. You know, going for a quick workout can help. You know, finding foods that are healthy for you but taste good as well can also help. So find little things and sometimes you have to just downgrade yourself a little bit to like something not quite as bad, but you know, enough to get your fix and start there. And then work your way all the way down where you won't need any of these fixes anymore. You won't need any of these vices to keep you going because you have all these simple pleasures 
to yourself that can help. All right, you guys, so I've given you a lot of stuff. Now you probably watched this video and you're like, oh man, like this is a lot of stuff for me to do. Look, this is a process that takes time. This is something that I work with my clients on individually every single day. Everybody has things that are preventing them from reaching their potential. And for most men out there, pretty much all men who are even straight or gay, like it's just works for both. You know, you are going to have this in your life and this is something that you're going to have to deal with. I don't care how rich, how famous, how smart, how whatever you get, you will have to deal with this, all right? And learning to be able to control it will maximize all areas of your life because if you're just chasing short-term gratification all the time, you can't build anything. You can't build a relationship. You can't build a dating life. You can't build a business. You can't build a body if you're doing that all the time. What you need to do is learn how to be able to control this and everybody's journey is different. Look, mine was hard and long. This is one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. As I've gotten older, it's gotten easier because I've progressively worked at it. And I guarantee you, you can do this too. And look, if you want my help, if you want help maximizing your life and your dating life, then fill out the coaching form down below. would love to talk to you. Or if you want to take a look at some of my free content, take a look at the free school group that I got. Link is down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Good luck out there.